Hi, this is Aisha Hussain from Alangan Regional Computing Center at University of Alangan, Nuremberg. Welcome to this talk where I want to shed light on underlying dynamics of MPI pattern and hybrid memory bound programs that led to desynchronization and wave pattern formation on standard multiboard clusters. It is evident that supercomputers are highly hierarchical and no system is entirely quiet. Major subsystems affecting performance are both at network level and at socket level, like CPU, cache hierarchy, memory, and so on. Full list of potential factors is too exhausted and complex, and there is a vast body of research that targets the characterization of noise as well as its mitigation via explicit techniques. In contrast to that, in the present work, we want to understand the dynamics of bulk synchronous barrier free nature of parallel programs, that how processes in balanced parallel programs behave on clusters. Additionally, we investigate the favorable consequences of noise in case of memory bound cores, as it acts like an enabling factor for desynchronization and automatic partial overlap of communication and computation to get a speed up. I would like to start with introduction to problem that motivates us for this research. We do have analytical performance models at both socket and network end, which work fine for standard architectures in an isolated way like roofline or advanced ECM model for execution phases, or simple Hockney or log P model for communication. However, we know that analytical first principle performance modeling of distributed memory parallel codes is complex, even for applications with extremely regular and homogeneous compute communicate phases without any load imbalance or network contention, simply adding communication time to computation time does not often yield a satisfactory prediction of parallel run time. Experiments exhibit that either this simple compositional model becomes optimistic or pessimistic or works only in a very limited context. This is due to deviations from the expected simple log step pattern in practice. In order to investigate why compositional model does not work, we want to understand this exception from log step state. Initially, we start with the simplest case of negligible communication overhead we run a lockstep MPI program of homogeneous communication characteristics without explicit synchronization or global operations. Firstly, we consider a scalable workload. In the simplest communication scenario, where processes communicate to the next neighbor only in one dimension on a noise-free system. Then we generated a one-off delay by massively extending the computation phase of rank 5 by doing extra work at the first time step. In the next iteration, rank 4 cannot continue before it has received a message from rank 5 and gets delayed by the same length of delay. This process continues with the next iteration until it hits an open chain boundary. However, due to the eager message protocol, ranks greater than 5 can get rid of their messages and are unaffected by this delay. This is how a delay in computation or communication on one MPI process generates an idle wave. That is, a period of idleness propagates across processes and ripples through the system at a constant speed. To know further about the generalization of this whole idle wave propagation behavior, please have a look at our linked paper. We will demonstrate that in a scalable program, how basic flavors and propagation speed of this wave are governed by the communication characteristics that usually occur in many linear algebra and domain decomposition scenarios and entails more rigid dependencies across processor grid like communication distances, message protocols, and so on. Now we run an MPI parallel code with bidirectional next neighbor communication between processes by employing a non-blocking standard MPI I send, I receive, and wait all sequence in a closed ring topology on a SuperMOOC cluster. We investigate basic mechanisms using simple parallel microbenchmarks that are amenable to straightforward node level performance modeling and can mimic different application characteristics. Here we run an MPI parallel kernel of number of back-to-back double precision divide instructions of constant throughput with enforced core thread affinity and fixed clock speed of processes. All nodes are connected to a fully non-blocking leaf switch to reduce the interference from other jobs and enable full non-blocking bandwidth. We show experiments on two nodes only since the basic terminology is visible even on this scale. Red boxes in the time and graph exhibit waiting time within MPI library. An interesting thing in this timeline visualization of MPI trace is that in noise-free environment, idle wave propagates without any decay with this constant speed and eventually interacts with itself 
We know that idle waves have non-linear characteristics, that is, colliding idle waves interact and partially cancel each other. Falling paper already explained that how mainly the trailing edge of idle wave is capable of interacting in a non-linear way with itself, with other idle waves, with grid boundaries, or with noise, and causes the decay of traveling idle waves, possibly to the point where it dies out completely. An important point to look at is, whenever the idle wave is gone, automatic resynchronization is inevitable. Now, even though communication characteristics or any other parameters does not change at all, basic phenomenology of parallel programs changes predominantly, contrasting resources with or without the presence of at least one relevant bottleneck. There is a wide spectrum of resources for possible bottlenecks, like cache, memory, network, and so on, where each contented group contains multiple processes using shared resource. Note that other bottleneck curves could be different from this shown memory bandwidth bottleneck. Here we mainly discuss in detail about the saturation characteristics of a contented CPU socket that plays a decisive role when running on a multiple cores connected to a single memory interface. As a case study of running non-scalable, memory bandwidth limited nature of workload, we used MPI parallel simple stream tried code of low computational intensity. It is strongly influenced by topological boundaries of contented sockets and nodes domain or within memory domain. More complex dynamics can be observed with two main practical consequences as a second order effect of bottleneck limitation. First insight is directly linked to the decay dynamics of idle wave. As soon as contention set in, in the saturation phase, memory bandwidth with n processes remains constant and available memory bandwidth per core declines. Thus, the execution time on any particular NPI process depends on how many number of processes are executing user code concurrently on the same contented domain. As the time progress and idle wave travels through the core of a socket, more cores participate in the core execution for the leading edge and fewer for the trailing edge. Hence, it shows a slowdown and speed up respectively with this variable propagation speed. On the other hand, in the zoomed figure, the next contention domain, that is second socket, is still executing all cores and is thus slower per core. So either phases are emanating from the end of first socket, that is core 23. These small idle waves propagate up and interact with the main idle wave on cores 17 to 23 and effectively causing its partial decay. Same thing happens on other sockets. Note that it's a silent system and this decay has nothing to do with system noise. Eventually, the leading edge hits the boundary to the next socket, so the first socket is free of any delay and bulk synchronous execution is restored there. The idle waves is now progressing entirely through the second socket. Second prominent insight is, because of decay of injected idle wave, processes that have collected less idle time on the second to fourth socket finishes early and automatic overlap of communication and computation does occur. And when idle waves has gone, this automatic desynchronization is inevitable and prevailing effect or distinctive wave-like pattern emerges in highly parallel memory bound programs. In actual, it is the echo of form decayed wave that we called as computational wavefront. This stable pattern is marked by the different processes reaching a specific time step within an application run at different wall clock times. It has a fundamental wavelength of communicating system size and other properties that is pattern shape and amplitude are drawn by both communication and bottleneck characteristics. However, hybrid memory programming of stream tried kernel that communicates only outside the OpenMP parallel regions can prevent this desirable desynchronization by illuminating the bandwidth bottleneck among processes. Note that the propagation speed equation even holds for hybrid programs, and spanning an MPI process across several cores on a contented domain is equivalent to reducing the number of cores, which makes for weaker saturation characteristics. If n is equal to 1, that is a single multi-threaded MPI process spans the full socket, then there is no bandwidth contention among processes, and it effectively recovers a scalable code. Idle wave is hardly damped and eventually cancels itself with no desynchronization prevailing or no computational wave follow-up. In short, if number of threads per process is large enough to show linear bandwidth scaling across processes, spontaneous wave formation with automatic overlap will not occur. 
and memory bound nature of code is of no significance. Now the question is, how stronger or weaker bottleneck behavior on a single socket domain makes a difference for parallel computing on clusters? As it is very crucial for the amplitude of a formed wavefront that how exactly the application saturates. It might saturate very early or later. So we did this bottleneck analysis by varying hardware and software configuration settings. Here we show typical memory bandwidth saturation behavior of memory bound stream trying kernel on a socket with progressively more severe memory bottleneck with an increase in number of cores per contention domain. This phenomenology is crucial for the desynchronization of memory bound MPI programs. So we conducted a series of timeline experiments after injecting a one off delay on InfiniBand ME cluster with dual socket nodes comprising 10 cores IV bridge CPUs. In scalable regime, up to three cores, whenever either wave is gone, it's fully synchronized. That is, visible computational wave pattern is straight line perpendicular to the time axis. As soon as the bandwidth bottleneck becomes relevant, the characteristics of traveling wave changes predominantly, depending upon how far we are on the saturation curve. So more core leads to slower execution, that is less bandwidth available per core, thus dampening effect on the idle wave setting. Although it's very weak at first, but even in this regime with this low amplitude, a stable computational wave persists. And at strong saturation, desynchronization is clearly visible and causes a fully developed wave-like pattern. Hence, a strong wave front required a strong memory bandwidth saturation. However, for this experiment, we choose a very specific benchmark on a certain system that come up with a customized saturation curve. Now we need to be ensured that terminology of computational wave formation is not specific to a single hardware or software setup. So we tested variants of bandwidth saturation characteristics for their reaction to the injected delay when using all the cores on a contention domain. Firstly, instead of non-temporal stores, we use standard stores of stream tried on an InfiniBand ME system. So single core bandwidth becomes a factor of two higher with shifting the saturation point further in. However, saturated memory bandwidth also got affected. Then we switched to Maggie cluster where broadband CPUs have convenient property that saturated memory bandwidth depends only weakly on the clock speed. So activated turbo mode let the clock frequency varying from 3 GHz at one core to 2.4 GHz at full socket along the scaling curve. On the other hand, we set the clock speed to lowest constant 1.2 GHz. As expected, comparing of MPI traces shows earlier the saturation point that is more data hungry the serial core, stronger the dampening that causes the larger amplitude of the generated computational wavefront. Also, similar effects were observed using different benchmark platforms like InfiniBand, OmniPath, or Gray-based clusters. Additionally, we tuned saturation point by varying workload characteristics on SuperMOOC NG with its 24 cores per contention domain and fixed power cap clock speed of 2.3 GHz. Instead of stream tried, we employed a modified slow variant of Schneier vector tried that has a higher computational cost and increased saturation point from 14 to 20 cores with sharply defined saturation point. Again, expected result in dampening and wave amplitude were observed. Now there comes a question that how does the impact of communication characteristics like communication distances, pattern and topology and the length of extra workload makes a difference in the behavior of memory bound parallel programs. First, we injected a short one-off delay into the code with open boundary conditions and next neighbor bidirectional communication on the InfiniBand ME system. Corresponding idle wave in negative rank direction dies at rank zero as expected. The idle wave in positive rank direction hardly travels beyond the second socket before dying out, but a computational wave prevails on that domain. Doubling the duration of injection in the next figure, leads to longer idle wave that extends across all three sockets in the positive rank direction. Although the slope of the generated computational wave is same in both cases, as the delay strength has no influence on the local slope of computational wave. Additionally, beyond simple point-to-point -point communication patterns, here we visualize the influence of multi-neighbor long-distance communication patterns and topology. Each MPI process communicates with its next neighbor in rising positive rank direction and with its next and next to next neighbors in falling negative rank direction. 
Moreover, the topology were changed to periodic boundary conditions. In the timeline visualization, as expected, the idle wave can now roll over the system boundary and eventually annihilates itself. The idle wave in negative rank direction is three times faster than the one in positive rank direction, and the resulting slopes involved in the computational wave that translate into different wave amplitudes are influenced by the same communication patterns that go on the slope of idle wave and have the same 3 to 1 ratio for two distinct slopes. Now there is still a question, whether memory bandwidth saturation point, that is how many processes per memory domain are needed to attain the maximum memory bandwidth utilization, plays any role. And the findings are that the location of saturation point is pivotal in these dynamics. Timeline figure exhibits how we count the number of processes actively working on memory interface for each contented domain at certain point in time. Comparing with the results for variant saturation cases with simplest direct neighbor communication, there is evident that computational wave settles in a state where the number of processes concurrently running user code within a contention domain is very close to memory bandwidth saturation point. Here frame shows the saturation curve. And key observation is processes desynchronize and form fully developed computational wavefronts along the timeline. So longer inevitable waiting times alternate with computation on every process and overlap with user code execution. So available memory bandwidth per process is higher and computational wave settles at an amplitude that allows for just enough concurrently active processes to saturate the memory bandwidth, but not more. So now there comes two questions. First, until now we provoked this desynchronization phenomena by kicking the system with rather initial strong one-off injected delay. But is it possible that this desynchronization of processes emerges spontaneously via only the natural system noise over a very long time scales? Secondly, in contrast to negligible communication intensity, where the runtime of the whole program cannot be reduced since no communication overhead can overlap with the code execution. But in some cases, can we get the improved time to solution with significant communication intensity? And in terms of experiments, the answer is yes. Let's see how it looks like. We run the MPI parallel memory bound stream type code on four sockets of ME, an initial 25% communication overhead with bidirectional next neighbor communication and open boundary condition. We show four phases with different cutout of complete timeline near the indicated wall times. First phase is the synchronized state. This state from the beginning soon dissolves and after some time in second phase, local wavefronts have emerged. But no global state is reached yet. As shown in the video, these local wavefronts are not static, but shifts and changes shape. The x-axis shows wall time that is normalized to the slowest process in each iteration. After some time, fully developed global wavefronts have formed in the third and fourth phase and they persist till the end of the program. Hence, even natural noise can show off the system and pace the way towards state of automatic overlap of communication and computation. The quicker formation of these spontaneous wavefronts is linked with the intensities of communication overhead. As expected, the overall MPI time per process goes up when entering the wave state because waiting time is added on the top of actual communication time. However, since mitigation of memory bandwidth bottleneck enables automatic hiding of communication overhead with execution, which improves the performance of the program. The number of concurrent working processes per domain are indicated in circles that are near saturation point, that is five to six cores with normal stores. Note that there are two potential benefits from desynchronization, better memory bandwidth utilization by the application code and better network interface utilization. However, these advantages are partially offset by the memory bandwidth drawn by the MPI communication, and this overlap may not be perfect. Now figure shows a timeline of hybrid MPI plus OpenMP execution of parallel stream triad. The setting is same as in MPI run, except for four MPI processes with 10 threads each, running on the four contented domain, as one MPI process spans the full contention domain. So it does not profit from desynchronization and automatic overlap, and lockstep state appears to be a stable state. System noise causes a delay with subsequent desynchronization, which is quickly dissolved, and system return to the synchronized state. By the nonlinear interaction of 
trailing edge with the system noise lead to the important and general conclusion that the spontaneous desynchronization does not occur in this case. We must stress here that we have intentionally chosen a simplified scenario where the number and the size of the messages sent between the processes are independent on the number of threads per process. However, Multi-threaded MPI processes can also benefit from reduced communication volume and the messages count. And auto-synchronization is just one aspect of hybrid programming. Beyond simple benchmarks that are necessary prerequisite to understand the basic mechanisms, we showcase some of these effects in a realistic setting using quantum physics application. We choose this Chebyshev filter diagonalization algorithm for such analysis since its socket level saturation behavior can be influenced by a blocking factor. We use hybrid polarizable Chebyshev descalable implementation that uses loop fusion and a blocking optimization. Details can be found in the link below. Here is the basic algorithm. U, W, and X are blocks of NS vectors with NS being the dimension of such space. Then there comes the global scalar products and a sequence of sparse matrix multiple vector multiplication. H is the Hamiltonian matrix describing the physical system. Here's the sequence of simple vector operations. Then there comes the main loop that iterates up to the polynomial degree NP, which determines how selective the polynomial filter will be. The goal of algorithm is the computation of the polynomial coefficients eta and mu. However, since these coefficients are not needed, until after the end of the calculation. So global reduction can be postponed and lead to an algorithm without synchronization of global operations. The body of P loop can then be fused completely into a single kernel for better cache reuse. The figure shows the performance versus core per socket domain, contrasting block vector size of 2 and 32. Contrarily, NB is equals to 32 case is already close to core bound. Since the intra-cache data transfer begin to limit the code performance on InfiniBand ME cluster and indeed cannot fully saturate the memory bandwidth. These figures show strong scaling up to 10 nodes for both cases, contrasting two MPI processes with 10 threads each and 20 single threaded MPI processes on each ME node. With more scalable code at NB is equals to 32, more threads have a clear benefit while the situation is reversed with more saturating code with NB is equals to 2. The timeline visualization on 8 ME nodes shows expected computational wave effect. It has ample opportunity for desynchronization without threading, while no spontaneous desynchronization with threading. So, in short, we show the provoke and natural emergence of computation wave patterns and characteristics of idle waves traveling through the memory-bound nature of parallel programs and how they differ from core-bound case on multi-core clusters. We show that desynchronization enable automatic hiding of communication overhead, which can, in some cases, improve the performance of a program. Although significant MPI communication requiring part of the memory bandwidth can reduce this gain. Also in hybrid programs, fewer MPI multi-threaded processes per contention domain can prevent the formation of wave and automatic communication overlap, via effectively recovering the characteristics of a scalable code. Now the challenge is that there is a complex interplay among huge parameter space, and only a part of this whole investigation has been served here. Although we scratch the surface and uncover some of the mechanisms behind the computation wave formation that how threaded MPI processes, natural system noise, and contention change the underlying mechanisms. But our coverage of this topic is certainly limited to barrier-free bulk synchronous pattern that is regular compute communicate phases without any explicit or implicit synchronization. And we still have to go to the corner of a configuration space where it gets relevant to even complex applications with advanced communication topologies and other possible nature of bottlenecks. Also, we are currently working on nonlinear quantum modeling of these effects like wave interactions and stability or instability of bulk synchronous state and computational waves. Additionally, we are working on development of a simulator where it would be helpful to have a controlled noise-free experimental environment in which all relevant aspects from code characteristics to communication parameters and from contention to topological boundary effects will be influenced accurately at will. Well, that brings me to end of this talk. With that, I would like to acknowledge my co-authors, Georg Hager and Gerard Bolein, and thank you all for your attention.